Now to a group of teachers whose lives have changed forever. They've had to leave the job they loved because their students pushed them to breaking point. This is basically the end for me. Um, I had a career, a lifestyle, a job that I loved. Oh, we've been more than abandoned, we've been destroyed. They are there to teach the next generation, but in schools across the country, teachers claim they're being targeted. Some left damaged, even disabled, at what could be Australia's worst school. The ugly attacks caught on camera. Everyone else, go away! The daily threats pushing teachers to the edge. I felt like I'd been pushed over a cliff and I was hanging on by my fingertips. And I was just given that last push. I was the eternal optimist. Always believed that life was good. Loved what I did, loved my life. And now I'm on antidepressants. For Vicky Scarbeck, one of the things she misses most is being known as Mrs Scarbeck, the computer teacher. I've lost my identity. I've lost that part of me. Her 32-year teaching career was cut short when a student from Bansdale Secondary College in Victoria turned violent. Vicky says a 15-year-old boy lashed out and shoulder-charged her after being asked to leave the computer class when he refused to get off his phone. I stood my ground in which case he then put his hands together and went whack straight into me, caught me across my body and tore my shoulder. Vicky says the student received a five day suspension while she received a life sentence. After being diagnosed with conversion disorder, the mother has undergone months of therapy to relearn how to walk. Reliving the trauma of the attack aggravates the confronting and painful convulsions she deals with all day, every day. <laughs> Vicky is just one teacher who poured her heart and soul into her career and building up others. While the job ultimately broke her, the teachers you hear from tonight claim the students are not the only problem and that at multiple levels the school's leadership and state departments let them down. You are watching your colleagues be destroyed and with it you get more isolated yourself, you know that you're going to go under with them, you can't do anything. I didn't realise how big the problem was. As the school chaplain, Louisa Brewer's job was supposed to care for the students, but she soon realised the teachers were in need of help. So what were the teachers telling you when they came to see you? I can't do this anymore, I want to finish it. I, and then I'd ask the next question, do you want to commit suicide? And for some of them, yes. The answer was yes. That's horrible. It was absolutely tragic. Deb Stewart says she was one of those teachers driven to the edge. So I had a student push me downstairs and told me to off. Uh, nothing was done about that student. When I reported it, I was told, Oh, he's having a hard time at home, so let's just forget about this. A maths teacher at the school's Changing Lanes program, Deb taught some of Bansdale's most disadvantaged students. I think teachers are pretty resilient, but everyone had a breaking point. For seven years, Deb embraced the challenge of teaching children in the program, but when she finally needed a break, asking the leadership team to be taken off a class, she says she was given them again. But when you're pushed and pushed every day and you're watching your back every day, it's almost unbearable. As early as 2015, Deb warned Victoria's Education Minister, James Molino, about the misery at the school and the devastating impact it was having on the staff. Why the government refused to step in and they were quite willing to let teachers become suicidal, I'm astounded. Why was an action taken? Stephen Gennell is the Deputy Secretary of Victoria's Department of Education. So we've um, investigated these uh, allegations that we've had raised with us uh, and we've taken appropriate action. 
Current internal documents accessed by A Current Affair show there are multiple complaints highlighting when students were throwing things across the classroom, destroying other students' property and being verbally and physically abusive. When asked to leave a classroom, one student threatened a teacher, saying, I swear to God, I will smash your face. Working alongside Deb was Lee Metcalf, an English teacher at Changing Lanes. It was living with terror. You're living in fear the whole time that you were there. Lee says she's seen everything, including all in brawls and stationery used as weapons. With a lack of support, Lee revealed she had the local police on speed dial. Just when there was the worst violence and I was by myself, if I got to a phone, I called the police. It's accepted that uh, students can walk out of your classroom. It's accepted that they can push uh, tables into you. It's accepted that they can say that um, they're going to stab you and that there's no follow-up. Wendy Skeen says she suffers PTSD as a result of her teaching experience at Bansdale and is now on work cover. We shouldn't have been bullied or harassed by staff, students, principals, um, parents. What was the worst thing that you saw a student do to a teacher? Probably get punched in the face and start laying into them or something. And you, you watched that happen? Yeah. I couldn't do nothing. They were twice the size of me. Everywhere we thought we could go to get support, we just hit a brick wall. The government doesn't want to know, the education department doesn't want to know. While the teachers felt like they were alone at Bansdale, across the country others say they are also being traumatised. A, a school bell that would ring, that would send me into a complete fetal position, frenzy. And it was dangerous for the other kids as well, because if they were in the way of a desk that was being thrown, you know, they would have been hit, so you almost had to put yourself in harm's way to make sure that no one else was getting hurt. Charlene Cromlin was a teacher's aide at a primary school in Perth. During a lesson, a six-year-old boy grabbed her hand and hyperextended it behind her back, causing debilitating nerve damage. If I can't get it fixed, I don't know how I'm going to survive at this level. She can now barely complete daily tasks and struggles to lift more than one kilogram, while Sandy Stallenberg fell victim to workplace bullying at a Sydney primary school. It was very humiliating, but more than that, it was unprofessional and it was, um, it, it was behaviour that I'd never experienced in the workplace before. The teachers all devastated to be out of jobs they once loved. So, together, we have to try and redefine ourselves. And I'm not sure I know how to do that yet. And if you or someone you know needs help, there is support available. Contact Lifeline. The number is on your screen now, 131114. That's 131114.